After the service, Arthur runs up to talk to the minister. But since he can't stay, they agree to meet up at the fancy dress ball that's coming up. Somehow, when the mayor sees this, he knows Arthur has figured something out and goes after him, in a sequence that I'm sure is supposed to be intimidating, but once again falls flat since we don't actually care about anyone. What is honestly more disturbing is when he tells Arthur he'd like him to join his family as a son. Which, for reasons beyond my comprehension, Arthur agrees to immediately. Rather disjointedly, we get a scene where Arthur is made the parking inspector for the town, before ending up back at the mayor's house that night. Some of the youths smash up the fence with their cars and make demands for things like tyres and radios. What I find most impressive about this is the youths are able to make their voices and whistles stay the same volume while their cars are clearly driving away. It's a bit rough riding around on tin wheels. What about sharing the tyres out a bit? A bit of music wouldn't go down too bad. A couple of your radios, eh? In the morning, the movie suddenly decides it wants to be a mock western as Arthur strides over to a group of youths dressed as cowboys. He tells them, rather pathetically, that he'd like them to move their cars. They're having none of it until the only police officer in town takes him into the station to talk about the attack last night. The mayor steps in and decides a suitable way to deal with this is to set fire to one of the youths' car while the rest of the town folk watch. Well, that's going to need a new interior and a paint job, but it's clearly superficial. No? So we're going to claim that setting fire to the inside of the car while the rest of it is clearly undamaged is enough to ride it off, are we? Bloody hell. As the car burns, Crazy Charlie turns up with a shotgun and covered in blood. Turns out that he decided to shoot the minister in his car as he was heading into town. There was some lead up to this earlier in bits and pieces through the last ten minutes or so, so I'll give them a bit of credit there. He decided to shoot him because he didn't think he was getting his fair share of the salvage and... You know what? Bollocks to it. Who cares? Arthur certainly doesn't, despite the fact he now knows for absolute certainty the town doesn't care about murder or running people off the road and are happy to cover the whole thing up. The only reason they care about it at all is because it was the local minister and he was shot. So now, knowing that his brother was almost certainly run off the road and murdered intentionally by the people in this town, what is Arthur's reaction? Rage? Disgust? No, of course not. It's the same bland expression of pointless confusion he's had the entire bloody movie moving on the mayor has all the roads closed until they can sort everything out and after a short scene where arthur briefly considers leaving again we head to the costume ball which is going on as planned after some of the patients from the hospital turn up the mayor gives a speech including the school chant have you forgotten the meaning of those words Woomera, woomera. Babaloo, boomerang, crocodile, kookaburra, wombat, orangutan, wee ho, way ho, taramanga mine, quandong, billabong, gundabluey pine, platypus, emu, wallaby, roo, I was bulgur, a white cockatoo. Mar what meaning? It's just a list of Aboriginal words and animal names. It's bloody gibberish. On the plus side, in the very next scene, things actually start to happen. Of course, there's only about 20 minutes left in the film, but at least something is going to go on. Turns out the youths are a little upset by the car burning, so they drive into town to... <laughs> it's the most ludicrous thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> okay, where to start? Well... It doesn't look anything like the other cars that are in the show. They've all clearly been cobbled together, but no attempt has been made to make this look like it's from bits. And the colour's so uniform, it may as well have come out of the factory looking like that. I mean, just look at it! It's ridiculous, it's insane! How are we supposed to take this seriously? Right. So the U start smashing up the town in their cars. Basically trashing everything. Not that anyone at the ball notices until they attack the building itself. Yeah. 
You know, in any other movie that'd be absurd. But after the ridiculousness that was the spiky bug, I don't think anything's completely unbelievable anymore. So the townspeople brutally stab any of the youths whose cars stop for some reason. The idiot with the spear decides to square off against the spiky bug, discarding his improvised shield for unguessable reasons. And it goes about as well as you'd expect. You know, movie, given how basically evil and unsalvageable the people of this town are, I don't think this really warrants that sad music, do you? Arthur gets trapped in a garage by one of the youths and jumps into the mayor's car to hide. The youth pulls up behind him and begins goading him into a game of chicken. I don't really think it can be called chicken if only one person is in danger, you moron! The mayor arrives and encourages Arthur to reverse into him and when Arthur misses, the youth conveniently pulls back into place to let him have another go. Oh, sod it. So with the mayor encouraging him, Arthur rams into the car over and over until the bloody pillock in it tries to get out the door, at which point Arthur rams him. Twice more for good measure. I can drive. What. The. Hell. Okay, so what you're saying, movie, is the guy who was traumatised so much when he hit a pedestrian and killed him that he could no longer drive. The guy who was subsequently in a car crash that killed his brother, the most important person in his life. This man's phobia of driving is cured by intentionally crashing the car over and over. Oh, and by the way, intentionally murdering a man with the car. Let's get this over with. Everyone in the town starts leaving, probably trying to catch up with the audience, while the mayor blathers on about how there are traps set and there's no safe road out due to the traps and no one pays him any attention. And the movie ends with Arthur driving away in his brother's car, driving straight through the roadblocks. Do I actually have to tell you how much this movie sucks? The characters are boring and one-dimensional. And while a lot of little bits happen, I wouldn't call them plots because nothing comes of them. There is absolutely no resolution in this film. It's just bland, confusing and irritating from the beginning to the end. I am begging you, please do not watch this movie. You know, after this particular nightmare, I'm going to need something with at least a semblance of plot next time. Nothing too good, mind, because after that monstrosity, I've still got a lot of bile in my system to work out. So something with a bit of a plot, but really rant-worthy. Yeah, that ought to do it. See you next time.